Welcome to the Angus Report, a news program for cattle producers. From American Angus Association headquarters in St. Joseph, Missouri, we bring you the week's top headlines, including some key factors to consider before buying bulls. We look at branded beef's market share. We discuss the relationship between traceability and trade, and Paige Wallace reports on how feeders are using ingenuity to survive. This is the Angus Report. Hello, I'm Bob Cervera. And I'm Crystal Albers. Our top news this week. The U.S. beef industry has undergone some significant changes in the past decade, including an increased focus on meeting consumer expectations. That's according to a recent article by Dr. Neville Spear, which highlights the rise of branded beef programs. According to the article, which appeared in Beef Magazine, the relative share of box beef sales for branded product was relatively flat from 2003 to 2008. However, the relative proportion of branded product in the marketplace has steadily grown in recent years. Sales volume, seen here, established a new mark in August 2012 at 15% and almost doubles the average from more recent years. Bull buying season is nearly here and the decisions you make at the next sale could set the course for your operation for years to come. Here we discuss some key considerations to keep in mind before you buy. I think it's important when somebody's looking for a new herd bull or, or set of bulls to uh, uh, decide what that bull's job description is going to be. And by that, I mean uh, what your program, your business model is, what your environment is, what your uh, marketing program is. We have a lot of tools at the American Angus Association to help uh, decide what level of performance or EPDs you need to be looking at. When you buy a bull, uh, make sure you get a registration paper or you're buying a registered bull. Uh, that way you'll know exactly what you're getting from a genetic standpoint. Uh, to find uh, registered Angus bulls in, in your area that fit your environment and your goals for your operation, uh, uh, you can look through the Angus Journal, Angus Beef Bulletin, and there'll be advertisements of upcoming sales. Also on our website at angus.org, all of the Angus events for the year are listed on that. Feel free to contact your regional manager uh, anytime for, for additional information. Traceability has long been a contentious issue for many people in the cattle business. The issue of mandatory versus voluntary traceability requirements is often a heavily debated topic. Mark Gustafson, Vice President of International Sales for JBS and a speaker at the International Livestock Congress says, traceability is a key factor in trade negotiations for U.S. beef. Well, traceability has is, is been a topic that's been around for, for quite some time and, and there's, there's, lots, there's lots of aspects of traceability. Uh, a lot of people point to the international market and, and, and the reason being that most every country in the world has a traceability program. And uh, really, the only two countries that, that really don't have a sophisticated traceability program are, are really India and the United States. Um, although with the, the new rule that's just been announced, uh, we have a good start on a traceability program where they're talking about interstate transfer and some of that type of thing. And so we're, we're a little behind when we look at the international competition as far as, as traceability. Uh, I think I think one needs to focus on what is really necessary in traceability, and when it comes to, to marketing and meat and programs, it, it may not be necessary to trace that animal all the way back to, to the ranch, but that's what we want to talk about at the ILC is, is why we need traceability, you know, how we can do traceability. There's a lot of things, a lot of work that needs to be done, but I think, you know, our, our as an industry, I think our our main charge is going to be, uh, you know, what what does that really mean to the producer out there, and, and you know, what are they getting for their investment, and so all, all of these components kind of tie into the whole program. The Farm Bill remains in legislative limbo this month. Congressional negotiations to form a 2012 Farm Bill failed late last year. Instead, legislators extended existing farm bill policies, and now, some analysts suggest, congressional talks will continue well into 2013. The nine-month farm bill extension offers, at best, a short-term solution for American agriculture. The temporary legislation continues all direct subsidies, but cuts funding for some farm programs, like disaster aid or programs designed for beginning farmers and ranchers. Congress heralded the temporary legislation as a way to prevent milk prices from doubling, but many ag organizations would rather opt for new farm bill legislation to reduce risk. 
Join us in Denver, Colorado for two must-see events during the National Western Stock Show. The 2013 Bases Loaded Sale, January 15th on Coors Field, and Angus Night on the Mountain 2, January 16th at Spruce Mountain Ranch. Visit cotton-associates.com. That's cotton-associates.com to learn more. Working together, succeeding together. That's Cotton & Associates.